Yeah, please. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Today um, we are continuing with uh, Damodar Leela. Um, Guru Maharaj has um, given a series of uh, classes until 10.9.17, and today's verse is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 9th chapter, and 18th verse. Um, Guru Maharaj, you can take over, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna. Om Agyan Timirandasya. Actually, we'll do the verse first. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Samuta Samuta Swamuta Swinna Gatraya. Vishrastad Kabaras Vajaha, Vishra Parish Ramam Krishnam, Kripayasit Swabandane. Because Mother Yasoda's, because of Mother Yasoda's hard labor, her whole body became covered with perspiration and the flowers and comb were falling from her hair. When child Krishna saw his mother thus fatigued, he became merciful to her and agreed to be bound up. Purport, when Mother Yasoda and the other ladies finally saw that Krishna, although decorated with many bangles and other jeweled ornaments, could not be bound up with all the ropes available in the house, they decided that Krishna was so fortunate that he could not be bound by any material condition. Thus they gave up the idea of binding him, but in comp competition between Krishna and the devotees, Krishna sometimes agrees to be defeated. Thus Krishna's internal energy, Yoga Maya, was brought to work and Krishna agreed to be bound up by Mother Yasoda. Next verse. Evam sadar sitam yanga harinam vritya vasyata svavase napi krishnena yasyadam svevaram vasai. O Maharaj Parikshit, this entire universe with its great exalted demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, and Lord Indra is under the control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yet the Supreme Lord has one transcendental attribute. He comes under the control of his devotees. This was now exhibited by Krishna in this pastime. This pastime of Krishna is very difficult to understand, but devotees can understand it. Therefore, it says, Darshayam Stad Vidam Loka Atmano Bhaktavasvatam. The Lord displays the transcendental attribute of coming under the control of his devotees, as stated by the Brahma Samhita. By his one plenary portion as Paramatma, the Lord controls a number of universes with all the demigods. Yet he agrees to be controlled by a devotee. In the Upanishads, it says that the Supreme Lord, personality of God, can run with more speed than the mind. But here we see that although Krishna wanted to avoid being arrested by his mother, he was finally defeated and mother is so they captured him. Lakshmi Sarasya Satta Sam Brahma Sevyamanam. Krishna is served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. Nonetheless, he steals butter like one who is poverty stricken. Yamaraj, the controller of all living entities, fears the order of Krishna, and Krishna is afraid of his mother's stick. These contradictions cannot be understood by one who is not a devotee. But a devotee can understand how powerful is unalloyed devotional service. It is so powerful that Krishna can be controlled by an unalloyed devotee. 
this Vritya Vachyata does not mean that he is under the control of the servant, rather he is under the control of the servant's pure love. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that Krishna became the chariot driver of Arjuna. Arjun ordered him, Senayor Ubayor Madhye Ratam Sabaya Me Chute Chuta. My dear Krishna, you have agreed to be my charioteer and to execute my orders. Place my charioteer chariot between the two armies of soldiers. Krishna immediately executed his order, and therefore one may argue that Krishna also is not independent. This is this is one agyana, ignorance. Krishna is always fully independent, but when he becomes subordinate to his devotees, this is a display of an unlachinmayas ras, humor of transcendental qualities that increases his transcendental pleasure. Everyone worships Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead, and therefore sometimes to be controlled by someone else, such a controller can be no one else but a pure devotee. <laughs> Devakti Varanta Swami Tingalina Mastri Saraswati Devay Goravani Pacheli Nenever Sesa Sunya Vadi Pasyat Yeni Sutari Nemancha Kalpa Tulukascha Vipa Sindhupe Vachapatitanam Bhavani Gil Vaishnava Gil Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sivasavi Gora Bhakti Vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So these, this is the opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, hmm. he, is, he has all opulences. That means he is fully independent and fully powerful, fully uh, knowledgeable. He completes all aspects of opulence in all categories. And he cannot be, he cannot be controlled by anyone or anything. He is the supreme controller, Ishwar Parma Krishna Satchitananda Vigyaha. He is that person who controls everything, who puts everything into place and then controls it through his different energies. He is not able to be controlled by anyone. But here we see something very curious, unusual. And it's categorized as one of his transcendental attributes. He could be, he agrees to be controlled by unalloyed pure love. Mm -hmm. This is the nature of God. Mm -hmm. He is by nature the force of love within the world, and he is controlled by that same force. Mm -hmm. um, Love has a way to attract the object that it's being directed towards. We see that even in the material world, when a person has a loving relationship by a, to another person, that object comes under the control of that love and acts accordingly. That is the nature of love. But in the material world, that doesn't last because of the situations change, and therefore uh, the love also changes. But in the material, but in the spiritual realm, this love is the essence of the existence between the living entity 
and the and uh, the Lord Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Krishna Prema, Sadhu Kavunoi, Shravanari Siddhi Chitte, Gaudiya Yudhoi. That love for God is there in the heart. It's covered. But when it comes out through serving the Lord according to what pleases the Lord, that love becomes all attracted even by the object that it's attracting. So Krishna is controlled by pure love, but that pure love can only be exhibited by his devotees. Sometimes we see a person may exhibit pure love for the Lord in a particular situation or in a fleeting moment. But that doesn't attract the Lord. We see here the, con the consistency of the Lord's devotee. That love is not deterred by circumstance. Mother Yasoda went to great efforts to catch Krishna. And then she went to great efforts to try to tie him up. All these great efforts were an exhib exhibition of her love. She was fearful that he might, he might leave the house and uh, in a fearful condition, and then uh, uh, she, then he would be very unhappy. So, uh, in order to prevent that, she wanted to bind him and also control him so he would not curse cause further mischief. The Lord becomes subordinate to his ability. Um, one cannot artificially or surreptitiously or uh, perfunctorily and come to that stage. This is a development of consciousness that gradually reveals the pure love of the devotee for the Lord through the process of devotional service. When that process becomes perfect, that love starts to manifest. And when it manifests to a certain degree, then that attracts Krishna. And that attraction means that the, the devotee can order the Lord. <laughs> uh, sometimes people try to order the Lord <clears throat> by <clears throat> some demanding something from the Lord or even saying that if you don't do this, then I won't, I won't give you this and I won't do this. Sometimes we see people try to threaten the Lord or put the Lord in a situation where uh, they're trying to <clears throat> attract him by something material. But none of these things have any effect at all. Only when that love is pure. Um, pure love in itself is self-defining. How do you describe pure love? Um, Bhishma Dev gives the definition. When all of one's attention is given, given to a certain object with the desire to serve and please that object. That is somewhat of a rough sketchy uh, explanation of the word love. When there was others who tried to define love, but love is so, so powerful that it, it, um, it defies definitions because love is the essence of one's existence. We see in the material world, people who don't have love, any kind of loving relationships are always miserable. And as Prabhupada says, sometimes people will even go to try to love like a lower animal, like a dog or some form of pet, in order to experience some kind of exchange with the living entity. They think that the dog, the dog loves them also, but the dog can't understand love. And so the dog is just... Uh, coming around the master because he's either fearful or he's getting something from the master. 
my dad is not a love of exchange. Mm -hmm. So the, so here we find something really interesting because in order to emphasize this principle of how Krishna comes under control by love, we see that <clears throat> Shiva, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Lord Indra, <clears throat> they're so powerful. I mean, Brahma can create, Shiva can destroy. Indra, Indra has great control of the heavenly realms and even of the lower realms also. Still, they are insignificant in compared to Krishna and they can't control Krishna. But Mother Yasoda, she's just a simple lady, village lady. Well, what is her education? We don't know much about that. What is her uh, what is her family tradition? She doesn't exalt herself in any any way, but still she can control the supreme personality of God. So when love works in such a way that the object of the love is free from the mood of awe and reverence, then love has its manifestation. Uh, when awe and reverence there, it somehow interferes with the loving relationship. There may be some admiration and it goes on as love, but when there's, when the object of love is simply engaged in for that for that person's pleasure and no other reason then these are symptoms of love and when that becomes consistent and when it develops to a certain level of concentration that means when it becomes constant then uh, then we get the experience of love and the happiness that the person who is giving the love experiences is that when the person who is their object of their love is benefited by the activities of their loving relationship with them. In other words, a person becomes happy when they see that the person that they're trying to make happy becomes happy and they experience the happiness of that love. And that is love. We have an example with Srimati Radharani how she really wants to show her love for Krishna is complete. It says that sometimes Krishna wants to be with another gopi and Radharani knows this. And she knows that that gopi doesn't know how to serve Krishna in the way that will be the best possible way that she could serve Krishna. Radharani is expert at giving Krishna pleasure. So she goes to that other gopi and teaches that gopi how to serve Krishna nicely. So Krishna is pleased and that gopi gets the benefit of serving Krishna. And this is an example of Radharani's love for Krishna. This is not a constant thing with Radharani. She'll do that occasionally because most of the time she wants to be with Krishna. <laughs> but she also wants to show her love for Krishna by pleasing Krishna when Krishna wants something else other than being with her. Of course, that is not constant. Sometimes she gets angry, but that's another expression of her love. So, um, so we have five different rasas, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, uh, uh, parental affection, and uh, uh, what we say, intimate loving relationships or conjugal love, Madhurya Ras. Uh, so these different ways, or these different moods are ways to exchange love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So one should um, attach themselves to a particular type of personality and learn how that personality is serving Krishna in a loving way, and also glorify that personality, then one can start to understand a little bit about the nature of love. So that, that is recommended at a certain stage in one's bhakti, 
where one finds a pure devotee of the Lord who is serving Krishna with pure love. And then they become attracted to that person, attached to that person. They glorify that person. They learn what is the nature of that person's service to Krishna. And they also uh, try to serve in that same way in their basic day-to-day -day service. Now, this is um, some of the ways that one can awaken one's natural love for Krishna. Awaken means that it's already there. It just has to be brought out by devotional activities. And to love Krishna and to experience love for Krishna is the highest form of ecstasy. It is the perfection of all of one's activities. It's the goal of all of one's activities. It is the perfection and it is the ultimate principle of uh, success. Uh, therefore, love for Krishna is the highest and most exalted state of consciousness. And those who achieve that are considered to be the most fortunate. But Krishna is so attractive that that love is easily awakened by his attractive nature. He's called Krishna because he is all attractive. And he is attractive in so many ways. And different devotees show their attraction by serving Krishna in one of the five rasas. Uh, rasa means there is a certain, uh, rasa means mellow. And that mellow means a certain relationship or mood. In that mood, there is a certain taste. It's like we have friends. So sharing friendship with another person, there's a certain taste that comes with that, the happiness of friendship or the happiness of being a parent and taking care of their children or the happiness of conjugal love between boy and girl, uh, either um, within marriage or outside marriage. In any case, there's always some kind of sweetness, some taste that is called ras. <laughs> but when ras is when it directed towards the Supreme Lord Godhead, then it reaches its perfection. In the material world, material rasas are always mixed with some kind of problems or difficulties that come by way of the association with material energy. And it's just like you want to, sometimes you want to show your love for someone and you do everything to show your love. And, but sometimes that person doesn't appreciate it and you feel somewhat disappointed or unhappy because of that. But in Krishna consciousness, that's not like that. Because Krishna always accepts your loving relationship. And that is his mood. He wants to exchange love with his devotee. Even though the offering may be imperfect, still, if the love is pure, Krishna accepts. And he reciprocates. That's how he recept, accepts. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comment or question on this particular topic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fun, um, very nicely explaining these two verses. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, you can please go ahead. Yes, Mataji, Sri Devi Mataji, you can go. Thank you, uh, Shrimati. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, and all glories to these beautiful pastimes of baby Krishna. Guru Maharaj, as I was listening to your lecture, I was thinking to myself that 
love for the Lord is, of course, a very exalted and very desirable state, but we are still on the way uh, of trying to uncover that love. So when we say that there are five relationships, the Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, and so on, how do we know which relationship we are in while practicing Krishna consciousness? You get a tendency towards a particular one. After practicing for some time, you get attracted to one or another. Then that doesn't mean you're in that one. But that attraction can lead you to the next stage where you find a personality in that the same rasa. And then, as we mentioned, you glorify that personality, you learn about that personality, you understand what is their uh, relationship with Krishna and the pastimes they perform. You center your consciousness around hearing and chanting the glories of that personality. And then, if that's your rasa, it will be revealed through that process. If it's not, that personality will, with the help of your spiritual master, will direct you towards your actual rasa. But that comes when at a certain stage of bhakti. But we can still, at any stage, practice glorifying a particular... May we may be attracted to like Mother Yasoda, or we might be attracted to one of the cowherd girls, you know, like Lalita. Uh, so uh, that it, that attraction comes through the through hearing about and associating with these personalities through our day to day practice of Krishna consciousness, and then we move that attraction in that direction. And then we try to develop that. But if it's not our rasa, then in due course of time, we will be directed towards our rasa. So this okay. will be a very exalted stage of our bhakti. I mean, in the... It usually happens on the stage of uh, uh, ruchi, right? Like that. But you can, you can adopt this mood. Of, of hearing about and glorifying a particular personality at any time. You know, devotees have that. We find certain devotees like to, like a particular personality. Who are attracted to by a particular personality. So then you can follow that attraction and see see how it leads you. Yes, Another um, again, I have... again, 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 I mentioned many times Shiva Ram Maharaj's book, uh, Spontaneous Devotional mm -hmm. Service. And there's all the information you need. Mm. It's found in that book. Yeah, you recommend that book? I remember writing it down also. I still got it though should be easily available in Europe. Okay, I'll look it up in the library. I didn't think about that. It must be there right here. It's a small book, but it's very concise in giving the direction mm -hmm. on how to proceed and how to understand it. And one more question I have about Santaras. Uh, is that when all the objects for Krishna's worship, they have a rasa of uh, santa neutrality, like his bamboo flute and his bedstead and his umbrella and his slippers and things like that. Those are in santa in neutrality, but they are totally yeah. in the spiritual well, world. I, yeah, the neutrality takes on different definitions. The Maya bodies also may worship the Lord in neutrality. That means they don't do any service. Neutrality sometimes is without dasya. It's more like admiration. So one should avoid that particular mood. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're in the mood. We're in the mood of dasya serving. But sometimes you get a little glimpse of 
say you come in front of the deities and you sit down and you uh, you start uh, taking darshan of the deities and you become attracted to their transcendental features and qualities. So that's an ex that's an ex exhibition of an element of shantaras. There's no acts of service; it's just appreciation, admiration. Yes, yeah. but in, but in Vrindavan, the flowers, the rivers, the birds, the trees, the land, they're more like in Santiras. Some of them are in Dasyaras also. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's uh, really fascinating to read and hear all these things. This is so, um, you know, enchanting and so... Krishna is very attractive. We develop our attraction for Krishna, we'll forget about all our, all, these, all of this, what's going on in this material. It's just ephemeral. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Thank you for bringing that out. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna devotees, any more questions? Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, thank you. Uh, Raj, please accept my humble obeisance. It's all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj, all glories to devotees. Uh, Maharaj, you were talking earlier about how Krishna is the master and nobody, nobody has control except for Krishna, but he allows himself to be controlled by uh, his loving devotee. And I was thinking of uh, how we can see that even from a material perspective, for example, close to where I live, we had a, a big international rugby player living and he was like over six foot six and he had big strong muscle arms and shoulders nobody would tell him what to do but we, when we saw him at home he had two very small children now, they wouldn't even be the height of his knees but he would like the love for them he would do anything they, they had his control 100 percent yeah, Prabhupada talks about that same and similar with one, uh, one big minister in India. He was playing horsey with his kids and wasn't even attending to his regular schedule. Yeah. That's there. That's in, that's the nature of the living entity. No matter the, what their external features are, their their happiness is love. Without love, there's no happiness. The love takes its form in small increments or piecemeal expressions. But when it's consistent, then that's when it, then when it's consistent and it's guided by knowledge, then that's that's when Krishna becomes uh, controlled. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Well, it's amazing how he loves each and every one of us so much, but he's waiting for us to unearth our original, our original pure blissful love for him. Yeah, but don't make them wait so long. <laughs> well, keep following your instructions, Maharaj. <laughs> He's patient, but that doesn't mean you should take advantage of him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was a general statement. That was for everybody, not just not directed at you. <laughs> So 
Swaha Mataji, you have a question. Um, I saw your camera on previously. Yes, Mataji. You're on mute, Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Um, uh, I just uh, want to um, share one thing. Um, on Diwali day, uh, on uh, actually at night, uh, I had a dream and you came to my dream and you asked me, how many rounds do I chant? And and I answered the question, and I I answered that I chant um, because of Kartik. I chant thirty two rounds, mm. uh, but sometimes it doesn't happen that thirty two. But I at, at least chant minimum sixteen rounds. Uh, so I was thinking, what does it mean, and and should I chant more rounds or or? <laughs> or... <laughs> if you ask me, you know, every spiritual master may have a different angle, but I always emphasize the devotees to uh, chant early and chant more. Because this is the essence of our spiritual growth, our happiness, our the knowledge that we need. Everything is there in the holy name. And Prabhupada has emphasized over and over again that 16 rounds is just the minimum. It's not, it's not like maximum. It doesn't mean. So we can, we should, I mean, we have so much time during the day. A lot of the times we just waste time doing other things that we don't really need to do. We could be using that time for chanting. Yeah, so I always encourage disciples and people in general to try to find ways to increase their rounds, to look for opportunities to chant, to go to kirtans, to go to japa retreats, all of these things. Okay, good enough. I will try to increase or, or, or at least like even after Kartik, we will try to keep that goal like 32 rounds a day. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, if you determine, you can do it. But if you if you say, "I see how it goes," it may not go. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, <laughs> yeah, because I chant uh, sixteen rounds in the morning and in the day a little bit. I chant and and the rest in the evening. But sometimes in the evening, it's you know, difficult <laughs> to uh, find the time because of many reasons. Yeah. Um, now I always say schedule it, but oh. don't make don't make it don't make it impossible for you to do it. Or do it where you can do it nicely and regularly. Yes. Thank you very much. That's good advice, actually. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Shri Devi Mataji, you want to ask uh, anything? Yes, please. On the same point of uh, chanting more, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I I, I know that you have said to chant more and it, I'd love to chant, but sometimes people around us get very irritated when they see us chanting, you know, after the, the, the morning program is over and we're sitting there in the temple and chanting. And then there is a feeling that you're not doing enough service. You're just sitting and chanting. You should be doing service. And I've faced this before also that people think you're chanting too much. You should be engaged in service. 
So what do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know who these people are. You're, you're thinking like that. Are you imagining they're thinking like that? Not imagining. I, I was, you know, persuaded to start. Are you, are you feeling guilty because you're chanting more and you're thinking you should do more service? I guess it's a combination of both, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Are you projecting something that may not be there? Maybe, maybe. Uh, we can uh, we can always do more rounds, and we can always do more service. Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's a question of balancing time and energy and seeing how to do more and better. I agree with you there. So living at the temple, you have some prescribed service. So make sure you do all your prescribed service. If you can do more, that's nice. If you do more chanting, that's nice. Maybe we're not consistent with balancing service and japa, but we should, we should, have, we should have a, a minimum amount of rounds and a <clears throat> and a uh, service schedule. Hmm. If you don't schedule, then you, the mind will come in and start telling us all kinds of nice things that to do or not to do. And sometimes it tells you, oh, you're tired, go to sleep. <laughs> You shouldn't be, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, getting off the mental platform means to regulate your, your activities. Yes, Guru Maharaj, definitely that is required. Thank you for pointing that out. My humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, anybody else have any more questions? Okay, we can stop here. Oh, we got Vrindavan Nath is there. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Jai Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one question and you partly answered that question few days before in one of the class, but I still have that. Uh, after joining this uh, deity worship program or uh, uh, training course, Guru Maharaj, uh, where Prabhu mentioned that when we are worshipping Radha Krishna or deity, uh, we should worship in as per Pancharatrika uh, in awe and reverence. But this whole month of Damodar is where Krishna's sweetness is more supreme. So how to really worship? I feel like you mentioned that yes, when we are worshiping in awe and reverence, it's to build our process and we don't, we are not that at level where we can have reciprocation at sweetness level. But the whole bhakti and bhav insight comes Guru Maharaj in this different mood, like not in own reverence with Krishna. So how to balance Guru Maharaj? I'm feeling quite yes. uncomfortable. Worship Mother Yasoda, that's easier. And you get more benefit from that. <laughs> if you worship those who worship Krishna, then you're in the best position. To get Krishna's mercy. It's not so easy to it's not so easy to worship Krishna. But you can through by worshiping his devotees. You learn about Krishna by worshiping his devotees and how they worship Krishna. 
And the best thing for this for the sweetness mood is just hear these pastimes. That's, it. That's worship also by see by concentratingly hearing these pastimes, you're in the mood of worship through the process of hearing, because one of the processes of bhakti is shravanam. <clears throat> Guru Maharaj, like if we worship, uh, because there are different levels and uh, one is, I just want to get your uh, view Guru Maharaj, because I don't want to make a mistakes. Uh, so when we are worshiping, uh, even at home or maybe one day in temple in that way, uh, Yes, we need to have respect to deity. We need to ask in that way that yes, uh, you are supreme in that. But other level is when this mode of sweetness comes that whether Krishna or Radharani is feeling hungry or like they are like this or they are in that mood. And then just feeling and reciprocating in that mood. Is that okay, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, You're not doing sure. anything, it's just a mood. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that mood appears, and you can, you can. That that's that's coming from the heart. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. That comes spontaneously. You don't. You're not trying to bring it up. It happens automatically. That's due to Krishna's mood. You, if you study the science of rasa, you'll see that under certain conditions certain things will appear. And if those same conditions are not there, they won't appear. Yes, that's, called, that's called alankara. Alankara means certain ornaments that, that define a situation that is, that's appearing at a certain time. Just like I'm giving you, I'll give you an example. This is just a crude example. A husband and wife, something, a husband and wife might be together and the wife will say something and the husband will get really angry. And then sometimes the, the husband and wife is together and the, the wife will say the same thing to the husband, but he won't get angry. So the situation is different. That's it. Same, same things that are happening, but the environment and the mood that that is being the mood that is happening at the time elicited, elicits different responses or reactions. That's also how these things appear at certain times, and sometimes they don't appear. You can't plan that. Yes, like that mode of sweetness, I feel like can't plan. It just comes to Guru Maharaj and then. Difficult to stop also at that time. So good. Don't try to stop it. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. It's quite helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Hare. <laughs> Am I clear? Uh, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so, Maharaj, my question, uh, since the mood uh, is uh, brought up uh, by uh, Vivek Prabhuji, so uh, I just wanted to ask in that context, uh, uh, well, sometimes while we have Kirtan here, there, there are certain uh, bhajans in the... Uh, I, I, I'll just tell about the Gujarati language. So there are certain bhajans in Gujarati language in which um, uh, the the singer or the uh, writer is uh, chastising in, uh, you know, it's in the chastising mood to Krishna. So is, is it that the chastisement is of course out of love? Uh, so is it okay to sing such bhajans? <laughs> uh, 
the the bhajan is really lovely of course uh, they br- they bring up the mood so well but i uh, especially one or two bhajans i was just wondering if at this level uh, i should be singing it or not and generally people who have that mood don't make a display of it and turn it into a a something that's a, that's something that's more private personal if it's done in a bhajan i would i would question the qualification of the person doing it it could be just done because it's cute or because it's part of the song like that now you can i i don't know <laughs> generally if you think if you if you're thinking in the same way as that person who is singing it then you may be you may be known as sahaja taking things cheap and okay but i'm not saying you shouldn't listen to it but i i would question the singer uh, that person oh, really on uh, really on that, yeah, is he really on that platform or is he just trying to make a nice cute bhajan okay maharaj uh, i'll find out that and uh, usually usually someone who's on usually someone who's on that platform they don't make a display of that mm-hmm. they're in entertainment or otherwise it's that is a personal mm-hmm. thing it's not done in public i would okay. question would question that okay there's okay, so many Maharaj. I'll I'll send you the version and the details in the next mail when I write to you. Okay, you can send me the words anyway. It's in Gujarati. Is they translate and can you? So it is translated. Okay, okay. Thanks. But I is I am more interested in the person than I am in the budget. Yes, Maharaj, I'll find out the person. I'll I'll, I'll do that. it is actually the traditional uh, song so uh, i'll try to find actually uh, i'm i'm not sure about the person but i'll try to find yes okay okay thank you hari krishna so we can stop here tomorrow is uh, the class with the charlotte devotees yes good morning and so that's at uh, 7:20 eastern standard time it's good much yes and <clears throat> do you want to read the head the verse is 5:14:18 yes good much i was about to say yeah it's a uh, 5:14:18 yes good much and it will be 7:20 eastern time and 12:20 uk time 12:20 okay. pm uk time yeah so i have to go because i'm really doing a whole bunch of things right now Yes, good night. So, uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Yes, good night. Thank you so much for your assistance. Thank you. Jai Ho. See you tomorrow. Bye. Jai. Jai. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear devotees.